Good day, Fort Defiance High School, Fort Defiance athletes. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to be doing our winter sports awards. Um, due to the current situation, our sports awards were scheduled for March the 16th, and as you everyone knows, um, on Friday, March the 13th, schools were temporarily closed while we go through this pandemic. Uh, there's been a lot of discussions on how we move forward because we've been in a situation that we have never experienced before in our lifetime and how do we go about doing it. Well the one focus is at Fort Defiance High School is, is that the focus is going to be that we honor our students. We were hoping that we could do a winter sports awards and come back and have it in our time frame but our time frame now I'm concerned we may not get that opportunity. So in making the best decision we can with the, the situation. Number one, we're going to honor our students. We have amazing community and our kids are going to be honored today with the Indian Awards. How this is going to work is, is that each coach I have asked to film themselves at home uh, or different locations and basically we're still going to have the uh, sports assembly and awards. We're just going in the same format. We're just going to have it cut together and we'll have this go viral. So I have asked each coach to first to summarize our season and the winter sports season was a very successful one. A lot of great accomplishments. Our kids are always through adversity overcome and, and they're amazing. So today we are going to honor and celebrate our individuals. The way it will work is this. The coach will first summarize the season then they will talk about their all district, all region, all state, and individual team awards. And last, they will present the Indian Award. And I'd like to share a little more each time we have our assembly. We talk about the importance of the Indian Award. I consider, Fort Defiance considers, our community considers the Indian Award in each individual sport is the most important award that is given and it's a great honor. The Indian Award could be many different things. It could be the most valuable player. It could be the most improved. It can be the best student or the, or the greatest accomplishment or something, whatever the coach feels. So basically how I describe the Indian Award is, is that I tell the coach they have to put someone on a poster to represent what their school is about. Now we have many candidates because we have wonderful children, but I ask them, you know, to select the ones that they feel that they would best represent of what we want to do in our great community in the Indian way. So today, uh, we're going to be working together and putting this together and getting this out. I'm very honored to be a part of Fort Defiance High School and our kids and our thoughts, you guys have been in our thoughts, our community has stepped up, our school has stepped up with our food program, and most importantly, I ask that everyone still please remain safe. Thank you, and I look forward to watching this video and hearing all the great things about all of our sports. Thank you. Mrs. Mayo here. I just wanted to hop on and say thank you to everyone for such a great winter season. First of all, thank you to the coaches and the parents for being so easy to work with when an injury would arise. You don't know how much easier this makes my job when we're all on the same page. Uh, to the athletes for making every sport so entertaining to watch, the basketball games that would come down to the last few seconds, um, the wrestling match that we got to host. It was fun to see all of those athletes on the mat and not just in the athletic training room. Um, and even the polar bear track meets that we hosted, thankfully they weren't that cold. Um, but more importantly, I wanted to thank my athletic training student assistants. Without them, this, things would not have run as smoothly as they did. The winter season comes with many, many events and even more nights of late practices. Uh, but they were all ready and willing to put in the time to make sure everyone was safe and everything was ready to go. We have two participation awards this season, Gracie Lambert in her first season and Katie Kachanowitz in her second season. We have 
McKenna Boyne, who is in her third season, will receive her letter, and Lindsay Fontaine, who's been with us for five seasons, will receive a bar. Uh, thank you again to everyone who made the winter season so successful. I hope everyone is staying healthy, and I can't wait until we are back on the field for some more sports. Hello, Ford family. Um, I hope everybody's doing well uh, during these unknown times. Um, certainly, it's been a challenge to kind of navigate through this, um, and it's uh, – in reflection, I really, really feel bad for the uh, seniors here at Fort and, and other schools across the country to kind of have it all end so abruptly. I think it was about the middle of our spring break when, when the governor announced that school would be canceled for the year. So certainly, specifically, the spring athletes, I feel, um, you know, a big burden for them uh, to not be able to compete in their last uh, high school season. Um, but I want to just take a little time just to reflect back on uh, boys basketball. Um, it was kind of a, a tough season because we got off to a tough start, lost a lot of games early in the year um, by one, two, three possession games. And, um, and I tried to just encourage the kids to stay positive, to continue to work, and, and I felt confident that we were better than what a record war, was and that uh, the results and the wins would, uh, would come. And eventually they did. Uh, we got a win at Rockbridge on a Saturday afternoon. That kind of gave us, I think, some confidence. Played really well that day. I think the highlights looking at uh, the season, our win at Stanton this year was, was awesome. Uh, maybe one of the highlights of, of my short uh, career thus far is in, in coaching. But um, it was a great victory because it was a team victory, and so many different guys contributed that night. I think we built up a 13-point lead in the third quarter, saw that lead disappear, fell behind by four in the fourth quarter, battled back, got the thing tied, and then took control in overtime, scoring the first seven. Um, it was a tremendous effort by so many different guys uh, that night uh, on offense and defense. And uh, that was a great victory. Another uh, highlight, I think, was our, our win at Buffalo Gap at the end of the regular season. We needed to win that game, have Wilson lose in order to force the playoff game. And uh, we were got off to a bad start in that game. Battle back had it fairly close at half. And then um, late third, early fourth, we kind of started taking control and uh, played really, really well offensively. Uh, Vinny Sipe was tremendous that game. He had 28 points, uh, six of seven from three. Um, was just excited for him, excited for our team with uh, our backs against the wall. We had to get a win. We did, and uh, Wilson lost, and ultimately we got to play in that playoff game. So um, that, was, that was certainly a highlight. Um, Ryan Cook had two 50-point games, I think a 51 and 50. Um, unfortunately, they were both in losses, um, close games uh, to Stewart's draft and, and T.A., um, but to see especially the, the game, his performance against T.A. was remarkable uh, as he was hitting shots from three uh, mid-range and driving to the basket, and um, it was an easy 50, 51 or 50 against T.A. that he had that night, and um, uh, he had a remarkable season. It was really a pleasure to, to watch him play uh, this season as well. I want to say a few thank yous um, before I forget. <clears throat> I want to thank the parents uh, this season with the support of the program, helping with team meals, helping with concession stands. Um, it's a big part of, of kind of what we, what we do here at Fort, and just really, really grateful for that. Um, to be able to gather for a team meal before a game is, is I think, valuable time. And um, and we're just thankful uh, for those that were able to help in concession stands as well. So thank you for that. Uh, I want to say thank you to my three seniors that I had this past season. Um, Jerry Horning, Caleb Brooks, Sam Blackwell. Sam and Caleb kind of came back to Fort this year and was a part of the program. Um, this season, and just really grateful to have them uh, with us. Um, I felt bad for Sam because uh, he had a good game at Waynesboro there at the end of December and was starting to, to gain some momentum uh, individually with him and uh, broke his nose at the end of the game. And then I think he missed 
maybe 10 games or so. It was, it was a big chunk of time. But uh, And then Caleb, as the season went along, uh, he gained more confidence. I gained more confidence in him, and he, uh, he was able to contribute uh, with his energy and um, on the floor and became uh, a rotational player. So uh, both of those guys are some of the best teammates I've also had, and I think that was one of the big um, benefits and strengths that they gave to the entire team was how uh, encouraging and how they treated uh, their teammates, and I really appreciated that. And uh, Jerry Horning, uh, what a tremendous season that he had on the court um, with nine rebounds, 10 points a game. Um, just really, really had a good season and just grateful for his leadership and uh, what he did for the team. Um, individual awards, uh, all district. Let's start with that. Uh, Ryan Cook was first team all Shenandoah district this season. Ryan finished averaging 19 points a game and five rebounds a game. As I touched on with two 50 point games, uh, he had some huge nights scoring the basketball. Uh, was obviously our top go-to guy um, and really excited to see kind of where he could even elevate, elevate his game even more um, next year. Um, he was second team all region. So uh, I think he's one of the top two or three scorers, uh, certainly in our district this season and looking forward to next year. Um, I think he has a chance, you know, to be our district player of the year. Uh, Jerry Horning was selected as second team all district member. Jerry was just under a point um, away from averaging a double double, and that you know was a tremendous accomplishment. So he finished at 9.1 points per game for the season, and and right at 10 rebounds a game. Um, he by far led our district in rebounding. I think the next closest guy in our district averaged pretty close to seven. So. Uh, three rebounds plus uh, more rebounds per game than anybody else in our district. Um, we're going to certainly miss that uh, <laughs> production on the floor. Uh, he blocked shots for us. Um, but having Jerry on the, on the floor made it uh, really easy for the rest of us, the rest of the teammates, his teammates, um, in terms of usually limiting the other team to one shot. So um, this tremendous uh, performances and tremendous individual uh, seasons for both of those guys. <clears throat> and then I'll transition here and finish up with um, the Indian Award. Um, it means a lot to me um, to give out the Indian Award. Um, it means a lot of different things to different people and different coaches a little bit. Um, the Indian Award to me has never been about really what is accomplished on the court necessarily from a statistical standpoint. Uh, it's more about uh, work ethic, approach, um, teammates, how they handle, they interact with them, uh, how coachable they are, those type things. Um, and for the first time <clears throat> since I've been coaching here, uh, I have two recipients of this award and I'm uh, honored to uh, give out this award to both these young men. Uh, the first one is Jerry Horning. Uh, Jerry has, looking back really at the end of his junior year, I was not sure uh, really what, uh, what basketball would look like for Jerry. Um, uh, and he made his mind up to make sure that he was going to have a, a big, successful senior year. And he set his mind to <clears throat> really – Pretty soon after basketball, sometime in the spring, Coach Zetwick started our uh, workout program, uh, and he embraced it. Jerry fully embraced what we were doing, um, and he really never missed. I can remember, you know, a week that he missed or a week and a half that he missed, and that was for a missions trip, which also, which also says something about Jerry. And um, from where Jerry was last spring to – uh, November at the beginning of this basketball season, uh, he f physically transformed his body, was a whole lot stronger, and I think along with um, making himself physically stronger, uh, he became mentally tougher as well. And to average almost a double-double his senior year is one of the most remarkable things that I've seen <clears throat> 
since I've been coaching, looking back of where he was at the end of his junior year. And um, just really proud of what Jerry accomplished. Um, and he really set the standard, hopefully, and I think a lot of the other guys saw this, <clears throat> set the standard for what it takes um, to work and to be dedicated to something and then to see the results was was really, really cool to see. So I'm honored <clears throat> and grateful to to give uh, the Indian Award uh, to Jerry Horning. The second recipient um, of the Indian Award for boys basketball is Mason Angel. Mason is a, a coach's dream, very coachable. You do not have to worry about him in the classroom, uh, you know, away from basketball. Um, he makes decisions, one of the most mature kids that I've ever been around. Uh, I really enjoy talking with him. Uh, we both like to hunt and fish, and we've had a lot of great conversations about, about those things as well. But uh, the reason Mason is receiving this award is as the year went along, his role and um, playing time really fluctuated and changed a lot. Um, so a lot of that is, is because of uh, our opponents, uh, very rare, very few of our opponents played two true post players and uh, there were times where he played especially at the beginning of the year where he started played a pretty good amount uh, then other times maybe he didn't get in the game so it just changed a lot with Mason but with that that kind of roller coaster of not knowing how much or when he's going to play Mason's approach never changed he stayed ready all the time uh, he continues to work um, and just very coachable. And um, and I was really proud of how he handled that. And he didn't allow, and I'm sure he was, you know, disappointed that his playing time was not, at times, not what it was or what, it would like, what he would like it to be, but he's about the team. And uh, I really admired that. And hopefully a lot of his teammates recognize that as well. So... I'm just grateful uh, to have Mason as part of the program and look forward to what he can accomplish next year in his senior season. So really excited about what this uh, basketball will look like for us next year, whenever that comes, whenever we're able to do something. Um, but uh, with nine guys returning from the varsity team this year and uh, a really good JV group uh, that's going to be coming up in in the next couple years, um, uh, I'm really optimistic and grateful uh, to be <clears throat> with with the program here at Fort and uh, look forward to that. Um, so just to finish up, encourage everybody to stay safe um, during these unknown times. Uh, keep a positive attitude. Find opportunities and blessings in what uh, can be a challenging time and uh, just make the best of it. And I think that's how we need to approach uh, every day. Thank you. Hello, Fort Defiance. Uh, here today to talk to you a little bit about the Indian Award winner for the girls basketball program. Just to give you a recap of the season, uh, this year's 2019-2020, young ladies were Shenandoah District champs. You guys can see it on our shirts. Kids are yet to get. Uh, hopefully meeting with them soon and uh, getting some shirts out to them. Uh, girls ended up 19-5, and five, had a great year. Uh, had nine young ladies who really, really worked hard every day in practice and uh, in the games, uh, which resulted in a uh, fantastic record. Um, some individual awards. Uh, like I said, the team, we were Shenandoah District champs first time since 2004. Um, individual awards, we had Shenandoah District first team, Kirby Ransom. Uh, she was also... Uh, voted Player of the Year, had Bree Allen, first team, and Lillian Berry, first team. Uh, rounding out, second team was Meredith Lloyd. Also, Region 3C, had a couple young ladies uh, make all region team. Kirsten Ransom was first team, with Brianna Allen pulling up second team. And then we also had some uh, News Virginian, um, all city county basketball uh, players. Uh, Kirsten Ransom was named player of the year for the city county. Uh, Bree Allen was also named first team. 
Lillian Berry was second team, and we had Meredith Lloyd, um, Michaela Kirshner, and Jordan Schultz coming up with honorable mention. Uh, so congratulations to you guys. Uh, very well deserved. And, um, and now we're going to talk a little bit about the Indian Award winner. So this year's Indian Award winner is someone who played a vital role for our team. She led by example both on the court and off the court and served as a role model for our team as well as, young, as, well as the younger players in our program. In the girls' basketball program, we always challenge the players to leave the program better than they found it. And we also use the acronym PRIDE, um, which stands for Passion, Respect, Intensity, Determination, and Enthusiasm. The Indian Award winner, she came in um, as a ninth grader on the varsity team, and um, our program was coming off a 7 win season. As a freshman, at the end of the season, her team and teammates won 10 games. Her sophomore year, they won 19 games. Her junior year was a 15-win campaign, and uh, she helped lead this year's team to 19 wins. I think it's safe to say this young lady left the program better than she found it. Not only did she lead the program better than she found it, she displayed all of the uh, pride qualities that we want in our student athletes. Passion, respect, intensity, determination, and enthusiasm. She was very passionate about the game of basketball and more importantly, being a good teammate. She always respected everyone around her, including her teammates, the officials, and the opposing team. Intensity was this young lady's bread and butter. She was always undersized for the position and duties that were asked of her, but the intensity that she displayed made up uh, and more than likely surpassed any disadvantage of her height or ability. Determination is another strong uh, quality of this athlete. She was determined to succeed at any cost, not only on the court, but in the classroom as well. She, like all our players on the team, had a rigorous course load, but still maintained over a 4.0 GPA and was selected as the WHSB Student Athlete of the Week. Of the, week. the final letter of PRIDE acronym is the letter E. E stands for enthusiasm, and this player had so much of that. She was quick to pick up her teammates anytime, uh, and especially after a long day. Coming into practice, uh, working after practice, made it much easier with the smile and enthusiasm that she brought to practice, living up to her nickname, Bubbles. It was a great honor to have this young lady as part of the girls' basketball program at Fort Defiance. She is a true Indian in what this award means. This year's Indian Award winner, Meredith Lloyd. Hello everyone, I hope everybody is doing well and is staying safe. Um, gosh, I sure do miss everybody being here in the building, especially the students. Um, winter season seems like forever ago, back when things were normal. So I hope we can get back to normal really, really soon. Um, Sideline season was really great this year. Um, we had probably the largest number of kids come out for tryouts that we've had in many, many years. Um, so that was so exciting. It was great to see so many new faces um, wanting to be a part of the program um, and really hope that we can keep that trend and continue to build the program um, during the winter season, we just don't normally see those those kinds of numbers. So um, we were super excited to have all of those um, new kids showing up. Um, we had so many, in fact, that we were able to uh, establish two different teams, um, which was wonderful when it came to um, cheering at the home games for our boys and our girls. Um, they were able to rotate um, for boys and girls games, and it worked out really well. Um, and we really enjoyed cheering on our boys and our girls this season. So um, because we had two different teams, we felt like we should honor uh, two different kids for the Indian Award this year. Um, we could have definitely picked lots and lots of kids um, that was in the program this year, but 
Um, these two particular girls really stood out. They, um, they were so helpful to us as a coaching staff. Um, they offered up instruction for the newer kids and um, really took on uh, leadership responsibilities, um, even without us asking them to. Um, they just always came to practices and to games with a positive attitude, and we were just truly very thankful as a coaching staff to have these two young ladies step up the way that they did for their teams. Um, so it is our honor to recognize Kylie Davis and Olivia Hebb as our 2019 Winter Season Indian Award winners. Congratulations, ladies. You deserve it. And we hope we can see everybody soon. Take care. Well, hey, Indian Nation, uh, students, athletes, parents, miss you all. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm privileged to have the opportunity of saying a little bit about our indoor track season this year and introducing our Indian awards and other um, award winners. We had a great indoor track and field season this year. The girls were 3-0 and in regular season meets and the boys were 2-0. and We had numerous kids record some of the best performances in school history, a total of 20 four performances that ranked in the top 10 all time for Fort Defiance indoor track. L.A. Cook tied the school record in the high jump and set a new school record in the long jump. Kayla Royer finished her indoor career as the 12th highest scorer in point score ever. Both the girls and the boys 4x800 meter relay teams finished number two on the all-time top 10 list with the girls actually missing the school record by one second. Now like all our sports, it was an adjustment to the new district and to having uh, multiple classifications within the same district. Sadly, we weren't allowed to have a district championship, but based on the VHSL power ratings, uh, there's no question that our boys and our girls clearly would have been district champions. We had a great showing at the region meet. Most athletes uh, recorded their season best performances at the region meet and of course in track and field and cross country and sports, uh, individual sports like that, that is the goal to be mighty in May in the spring or to be great, uh, mighty in March in indoor or awesome in October in cross country. Uh, it's a season of building and training for a peak. So uh, we, were, we were definitely very proud of them. And, and it was also a great example of having the uh, internal fortitude to step up at the right time, to know when it is the time to perform at your absolute best and lay it on the line. That's what we trained for. Now we continued that at the state meet where everyone uh, that competed at the state meet had their season bests and all of them finished higher than they were ranked coming into the state meet. All district. Now these are based on the power rankings for all district. These individuals would have been all district. Hunter Lawson, Riley Shank, Kayla Royer, Dagan Wheeler, Delaney Stogdale, Allison Sheets, Sarah Moffat, Abby Riddle, Veronica Martinez, Ashlyn Fogelman, and Marissa Hansborough for the girls. On the boys' side, all district. Isaac Wood, Albert Coria, Austin Painter, Ramsey Corbin, Ashton Moyers, Luke and Mason, Nathan Shiflett, Sam Tyndall, Nate Smoker, Trayvon Winston, and Thomas Hannon. At the region meet, earning all region honors, Ramsey Corbin in the 1,000 meter run, Nate Smoker in the 1,600 meter run, the 4x400 meter relay team of Albert Coria, Luke and Mason, Ashton Moyers, and Ramsey Corbin, also earned all region second team. The girls four by eight of Dagan Wheeler, Allison Sheets, Sarah Moffat, and Delaney Stogdale. Kayla Royer, 
in the 55 hurdles was second team all region. And Abby Riddle in the 1600 run, also second team all region. We had some individuals who qualified for the state meet based on performances, didn't finish high enough at the region meet, but had previously performed so well that they had punched their ticket to the state meet. That being Ellie Cook in the long jump, Trayvon Winston in the shot put, and the girls 4x800 meter relay. First team all region and state qualifying was the boys 4x800 meter relay team who were the region runner-ups in the meet at Fork Union, Ramsey Corbin, Nathan Shiflett, Ashton Moyers, and Lucan Mason. Then at the state meet, earning all state honors, the girls 4x800, Dagan Wheeler, Allison Sheets, Delaney Stogdale, and Sarah Moffat. And the boys 4x800 meter relay, which was Ramsey Corbin, Nathan Shiflett, Ashton Moyers, and Lucan Mason. Outstanding work. Ramsey Corbin also was all state individually in the 1,000 meter run. Gave a great performance coming in, ranked about ninth, and ended up finishing third in the state meet. It was an incredible performance by Ramsey. Our Indian Award winners. Like many coaches at Fort Defiance, it's often a tough choice to choose one person to be an Indian Award winner. And this was true this year for both the boys and the girls, to choose, to choose, to choose somebody. I'll begin with the boys. Our 2020 Indian Award winner started the season pretty much as an unknown factor. His first individual race was good, but it wasn't impressive. He was just starting to learn. However, in the same meet, in the 4x400 relay, he showed the inner strength that we would appreciate all season long. It was very obvious that this young man did not want to let his teammates down in the relay, and he would not surrender. He battled a kid from Monacan who's a more experienced track athlete. It was a true battle, as they were shoulder to shoulder. Indoor tracks a little bit uh, like a NASCAR race on the, on the short track. There is some bumping and some grinding that is allowed and that goes on. We knew then that we had a competitor. We knew we had a kid that was going to be a special kid and do some neat things. He has become an intelligent racer who knows how to use his energy effectively and efficiently. I wouldn't want to be a runner just ahead of him with 200 meters left to go in the race in the 500. He completed his season as a member of the 4x400 relay team that ran the fifth best time all time. He was our third leading scorer. He was all region second team. However, it wasn't just his competitive spirit that set him apart. He also was confident and was an encourager. He was a true leader on his relay team and the team in general. If I needed something done, all I had to do was ask. Our 2020 Boys Indoor Track Indian Award winner is Albert Coria. For the girls, our Indian Award winner has been around Fort Track for a lot of years. She has the ability to run well at a broad range of distances, from sprints to middle distance. And for that reason, she's a valuable part of our relay teams. She ran on more relays this year than she did in individual events. And due to her talents in a variety of events, She's one of only two girls who are listed on the all-time top 10 list on a sprint relay and also on a distance relay. And she is the only girl in Fort Defiance girls indoor track history to achieve a spot on a sprint top 10 list and also be on a top 10 distance relay. 
She finished the season as our third leading scorer. She ranks number eight in the 300 dash. She earned second team all region this season. And she was all state on a relay team that nearly broke the school record. These are great accomplishments, but they're only part of what she brings to our program. She's been around competitive track and field for several years, and she brings a lot of experience. That experience allows her to maintain calm and to encourage that in others. She has the ability to step her performance up at the next level and to expect that of her teammates as well. She is responsible as a team leader. Our 2020 Girls Indoor Track Indian Award winner is Dagan Wheeler. Wrestling could be a sport where I is in team. It could be about the me's in the room stepping up on the top of the podium, but the top of the podium is lonely without friends, without family, and wrestling is not that kind of sport. This year we didn't have a bona fide superstar. We didn't have someone we would release to the mat and expect to win every time, but we did have family. We saw first wins out of kids who didn't think they could. We saw trophies gathered by stepping up when someone else fell. In fact, this team won more trophies than any other I've coached, without superstars with each other. This team worked endlessly to get better, and they did, each of them in their own way. On the mat, off the mat, they were better people, better wrestlers. They are a family bound by something few take the time to understand. They are a family bound by sweat and thunderstruck and shuttles and friendships which will last a lifetime. When the dust settled, two took the trip to the state tournament and two were alternates. Wyatt Fitzgerald and Gabe Straisner reached their goal. Alex Plonsky and Coy Brown were right behind. Several more were one match away. Aiden Mongold found his 100th win. Neo Roadcap fell in love with the sport all over again. Not bad for a room without superstars. Manny Sanchez has been with me since my first days at this school. He was my manager when I coached JV boys soccer. He was poised to have a great year, but it was cut short by illness, and he didn't get the chance to finish what he started. It broke my heart and left a void in our team, but we did our best to make up for it. With his absence, someone else had to emerge. Someone else had to step up and take the reins of this team. So I'll end, it, I'll end this with his words. This last season has been monumental for me. A season full of laughter, fun, sweat, blood, and family. I took solace in knowing that I still had time before graduation, before it was all over. I didn't realize that the next chapter of my life would hit before I walked across the stage. The grasp that I had holding on to what I was as a high schooler, as a wrestler, is now slipping. Wrestling as a team captain this year is my greatest achievement for this chapter of my life. Now that the season is over, this chapter follows closely behind. I'm not ready. Yet I will hit this new chapter with full stride. As a captain, I tried to pass down and engrave lessons into each and every one of my te teammates. I tried to make them feel like they had a place to belong, a place to call, call home, a team to call family. Everything that I was lucky enough to receive from Fort Wrestling. Underclassmen, it is your time to step up, take the mantle. Carry on the lessons that have been taught to you. Add to your own and continue to pass them down. As the former team captain, I am proud of everyone this year. It's your turn to greet the new faces on the mat for the years to come. Let them know that there is a family waiting for those unseen faces. If you have a genuine goal of making it to state, of being a state champion, it's going to take more than what you've seen me put in. It takes even more training even more cardio, even more technique, work hard, have fun, 
enjoy every moment and find new people to introduce to the family. It's your turn now. You write your own story. The next season has already started. How do you choose to begin your story this season? Your Indian Award winner for wrestling, Gabriel Straisner. Okay, wow. Like I said, and I've always said in every assembly that we uh, come together, this is one of my most favorite time of the year because we get to celebrate the accomplishments of our students. And as you have heard through many of the different coaches, we've had a wonderful season. I'd like to say congratulations to all the Indian Award winners, I'd like to say congratulations to the All-District, the All-Region, the All-State honors. Uh, I'd like to say congratulations on a successful season. Uh, going through and the many challenges and overcoming and the victories and the, the opportunities that we had to celebrate together. Again, I'd like to reinforce from the beginning, in closing, that this is not how I want to do this. But this was our option with making sure that we honor all of our students. We truly miss every single one of you. We know it's just for a brief time and we'll look back in history and I know in our community, as we always do, we will be better for it. We will be stronger. We will be closer knit and that thin blue line will continue to run. So again, we miss you, but congratulations. And I'm not going to say goodbye. I'm very excited about saying we're going to see you soon. Thank you. Be safe. And when we come back together, we will celebrate even more.